Confusion is lingering after a federal judge struck down a mask mandate for travelers. Joining us now for more insight is president of the Association of Flight Attendants, CWA, Sarah Nelson. Uh, Sarah, it's great to have you on the show. Everyone already knows about the news regarding mass compliance on planes. But I guess just to kind of start off very broadly here, people are confused. Do you wear it in the airport? Do you wear it on the flight? How do flight attendants want travelers to be approaching this kind of weirdness that we find ourselves in in the aftermath of yesterday's news? Well, thank you so much, because that is exactly the issue, is that everyone doesn't really know what to do, uh, because this was not rolled out in a way that you would normally shift a policy change in a coordinated way through all of aviation. Aviation rules are set up for safety. The mask uh, mandate was about safety and health, public health. And really, there should have been a, uh, a period over which there was a transition. So what people need to know is that the federal mask mandate is no longer required. However, individual airports, um, some, uh, some of the airlines, um, some of the bus companies, uh, some of the uh, transit stations still require the mask. So you need to be very aware. And if you can look up where you're going ahead of time to see what the rules are in your space, you're going to know what to expect. Uh, we are really pushing airlines, airports, uh, the federal government, and everyone to get together here to have a consistent message about what travelers need to know, what they should expect, and what they should prepare to do, because there are still requirements to wear those masks, even though the federal mask mandate went away, uh, and that will no longer be enforced by the TSA on a federal level. Sarah, what, what are you hearing from your members? Are they happy that... They no longer have to go after passengers saying, look, you're not wearing your mask, because I know that's created a really contentious environment on flights. Yeah, Akiko, we have talked about this. This has been really difficult. Uh, it, it wasn't difficult so much because of the mask. It was difficult because it was made a political issue um, and it was made a statement and people were told that their individual freedoms were being interfered with. And so what was happening was that people would buy tickets and they would confirm that they would follow all the policies, including wearing a mask the entire time. When they checked in for their flight, they had to do the same thing. And then when they get to the front lines, uh, interface with the TSA agents, with the passenger service agents, with the flight attendants, they were giving them a hard time. And so flight attendants have had to enforce that mask mandate. It's been very difficult. Uh, we've been called all kinds of names. Um, other people are just having a hard time complying. So the constant reminder and then the bickering and the undermining um, all the time. It's been very difficult and uh, um, in some cases has risen to violence. Although I wanna be really clear that most of the most uh, violent cases and egregious cases have nothing to do with masks at all. So what we're going to see now is we're going to see that uh, there's uh, essentially half of the public that would like to see this still in place, half of the public that would like to see it gone. Um, that's essentially where our uh, where flight attendants sit as well. And so there are going to be people who are very concerned about getting on planes. And it certainly was not fair within that immediate time period where the policy changed essentially mid-flight. So people who were making decisions to fly with young children who hadn't been vaccinated yet, or um, people who are immunocompromised, or flying to another person who is um, medically at risk, at higher risk. This was unfair because the rules changed on the mid-flight and they had nowhere to go. This mm -hmm. creates more conflict. So what flight attendants are saying and what we have been saying um, while the mask mandate was in place um, and now in this new uncertain time, uh, we, we are saying to everyone, please be very clear about what the rules are. Help people understand what to expect why they should expect that, mm -hmm. um, and what we also recommend for your best safety. So we should always continue to put out that the CDC continues to recommend that people wear mm -hmm. a mask on public transportation for their own protection and for the protection of all of the public. So Sarah, among members of the association, is the consensus that they do want everyone to mask up, that they don't want everyone to mask up? Because that is a question of safety among your members, is it not? It is. This is our workspace. And so um, part of the problem here is that it's one thing if everyone getting on the plane is vaccinated, if they're testing, if they're doing all the things to try to mitigate the risk of spreading this virus. But as the virus is on the rise, 
Um, there are people who have been led to believe that this is, you know, a selfish choice and that you don't have to think about anyone else. And so people are knowingly coming to the airport sick and then not wearing a mask. And it's it's those concerns in this confined space where everyone has to travel together and where the people that I represent are going into this workspace where there is a problem. Are flight attendants happy that they don't have to continue to remind people and put themselves in the middle of that conflict all day? Certainly. But are they also, um, many of them, very concerned about what this will mean for their own personal safety? We're hearing a lot of that, too. All right, Sarah Nelson, Flight Attendants Association, CWA President, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it.